were the GSA, the European GNSS agency, and we were this agency until April last year. And, and in April, there was a new regulation, which is a new EU uh, law that created our agency, building on the GSA. And now we are USPA, the European Union uh, Agency for the Space Program. It is more than just a, name, uh, a change of name. Of course, the name matters. Uh, but what matters most for us is really the content. Um, and with this change, we are getting more responsibilities on the space program of the Union, um, navigation, Galileo and Egnos, but also responsibilities on uh, Earth observation, Copernicus and governmental uh, communication. So a lot is happening right now here. As I understood it, it's mostly about basically gathering data about planet Earth, but it seems that it's not that much about like uh, I would say just solar solar system exploration in the next like 20 years. It will be mostly about Earth, right? Uh, USPA is about services from space. It's about delivering, but also making use of space data, space signals for the benefits of users. For the benefits of users, um, the general public, special users, professional users, governmental users. And this is, uh, right now, it is building mainly on two elements. One is navigation, mm -hmm. which we all use and need on, on our mobile phones, on our cars. But also it's used in trains, it's used in airplanes, it's used everywhere. Navigation. And making best use of Earth observation, uh, Earth images uh, that help us to, be to, to better plan, to uh, uh, better understand also our planet, which is something quite important these days. And as we will move forward, uh, also as part of this mandate, but something that is now starting, it's also about telecommunications, uh, governmental uh, satellite telecommunications. But of course, focusing on Earth and the benefits that space brings to Earth. So I guess there's like no direct plans for new, new rockets or anything that would be like more sexy, but less useful. Uh, no, I mean, uh, our mandate is really focusing on, uh, on the benefits to Earth. We use rockets. Uh, all our satellites are launched uh, using, uh, using rockets. Here in this building in the wonderful city of Prague, we have a lot of uh, aerospace engineers. Uh, that are of course also very interested on everything that is related to exploration, etc. But that's not our focus. Our focus is really uh, picking up space data, picking up space signals and making a good use of them for everyday life. The data are really important. The data is very important and I mean uh, space data today is used everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure all, uh, e everyone knows and really understands but um, have a look at your mobile phone. Half of the apps that you use in your mobile phone are using satellite navigation. And if you take satellite navigation from your mobile phone, there are many things you cannot do. You cannot order food, you cannot call a text, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. So it is really in, in the everyday life. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you are listening to the news. Those news came to you via satellite. Uh, you enter into your car, you drive to work, you drive to school, you are using satellite data. You look at the weather forecast, the weather forecast is coming from so space is really uh, is really everywhere and is really fundamental for the way we live and also for the way we want to live in the future okay what's your favorite niche use of galileo system ah it's very difficult it's very difficult to say because there are so many nice go for the niche one may i take two i will take a niche one but a niche one that i think is very dear to us which is um, when galileo saves lives okay because galileo is used to save lives in Galileo, we have, for example, on board, we provide a service for search and rescue. Uh, search and rescue at sea, in case of ship is sinking, people can activate a signal and call for help. But it's also now we are looking at using it, for example, for mountaineers. Uh, and I think uh, even if it is, it is a service that we don't like to see used because people only use it when they are in distress. Um, but when it is used, it's very important that it works. I think for, for me, this is a particularly dear one because it saves lives. Um, if I look at the more global use of uh, space in general, and Galileo in particular, is uh, what can Galileo and what can space do to help us live longer and better in our planet, to, go to attain the Green Deal, to, have, to reduce our environmental footprint? And there space can do really a lot. Huh? Uh, more efficient transport, shorter connection times, less car, driving in, uh, less car driving in town, but also more efficient agriculture. Uh, if we can move to precision agriculture, we will re reduce the number of pesticides, we will, remove, we will reduce uh, the CO2 emissions, 
So uh, space is fundamental for that. More precision mm -hmm. means less fuels, means less pesticides, means a better earth. I would also ask, uh, there's a one problem with another kind of pollution, and that's uh, space pollution. There's a like, huge amount of uh, satellites in orbit and other, like, that are not useful anymore and other trash. Uh, is there any plan to solve this problem? Uh, we need to, t the same way we have to take care of our Earth, we have to take care of our near space. Because our near space is a resource very important for all these things I've mentioned before. And it is scarce. Uh, although space looks infinity, the vicinity of Earth is not that big. So we need to be very careful. And there, two things. First, obviously, we are very careful in planning our missions uh, and making sure not to create what we call debris or, uh, if you want, pollution. Uh, because even a very small piece flying at a very high speed in space can be very damaging to, uh, to another satellite. But there is another, an, another important element, which is the element of the awareness. We need to be aware of what is happening in space around us. We need to be able, for example, to see when we have our Galileo or our Copernicus satellites, is there any piece of trash approaching? And this type of observation is something that is already being done, but that we here at USPA in this house, I think we will have a role to play on that. I don't want to advance much right now because this is an idea uh, in birth, but I think we'll have a role to play on that. So the plan for another 10 years is? The plan for another 10 years is a, is, is a bright and growing agency, uh, hopefully uh, more and more recognized uh, on what it brings to the public, on the, what it brings to the citizens in the European Union, in the Czech Republic as well, but also uh, outside the European Union. I think the future for people working in space is a bright future and the future in, our, in this agency, I believe it's, it's very bright. Okay, in that case, my last question, how is it to have this agency in Prague? It's a fantastic place to be. We are at the heart of Europe. Uh, being a European Union agency, you, we can't be in a better place than, uh, than in the heart. We have the right conditions, wonderful neighborhood, uh, great building that you can uh, see today and, uh, and you'll surely be able to visit. Great place to be and a very happy staff to be here. Okay, and, and last last question is, uh, what would you say to our viewers about like to invite them here for this open door day? I, I would tell definitely come over. Uh, we have now three days. You will see the exhibition. You will see the demonstration of what we are doing uh, in space, with space, for you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you.